Welcome back to it, the Now Morning Show, where we are taking a look at Fire Prevention Week, which runs from October 8th to 14th. And naturally, Rockus is with the Trinidad and Tobago Fire Services in our spotlight today. Welcome back inside the Now Morning Show. Fire Prevention Week wants you to be a part of it. Cooking safety starts with you. That's the theme for this year. And this morning, I want to welcome uh, Officer David Hunt of the fire, uh, fire Prevention Officer, as well as Jude Rogers, Fire Prevention Officer, joining us on set this morning to chat about Fire Prevention Week. Good morning, gentlemen. Good, Good morning. morning. Good How morning. are we doing this morning? Excellent. Now, I got some very interesting stats um, yeah. from y'all, actually, yeah. where it said that an average of 700 house fires per year took place for the period 2021 to 2023 so far. Yeah. Uh, do you see anything in particular that would have caused such a, a drastic increase in, in fires? Well, definitely. Um, good morning to our listeners. Um, we've been noticing the average. These are post-pandemic figures that yeah. we're talking about. So you would imagine as persons were in their homes, locked up during the pandemic, the figures would have dropped drastically. But coming out of the pandemic, as people are going back to normal functioning, the, the, there's a, there seems to be an increase. And I'm, I'm sure you would have seen a lot of the news um, where there are deaths by fires mm -hmm. that are also occurring. And it seems that we're slipping back into that, that slippery slope of um, increases in fires. And so that's why we have to be here. And Fire Prevention Week is, is, is our premier promotion yeah. for the nation to really understand what are the hazards. What were the figures like pre-pandemic? Was it similar? Pre-pandemic, pre um, it was similar. Mm. That is correct. So just for the pandemic, so we had a little cool down. Just for the pandemic, persons were at home. Mm -hmm. it, mean, it meant that we didn't have the negligence, some of the negligence that okay. would have taken place as you are home, you would have been able to see where you made mistakes and correct them. Mm -hmm. But when you leave your home and you are not able to attend to a certain situation, we leave a lot of hazards in the home. Yeah. Um, Officer Hunt, can you exp can you tell me if it is that we have uh, can we tell the difference between fires that were started based on on negligence versus uh, things that were based on electrical fires, for example? Yes, um, there's a, a method called the scientific method for investigating fires, where right. you use your your knowledge uh, and you, you develop a, a hypothesis, which we call an educated guess, and from that now you use scientific theory to either so get evidence to support or not support th that particular guess. Mm -hmm. And once you have the evidence, it leads you down a way to identify a point of origin, an area of origin, mm -hmm. and an ignition source. Mm -hmm. Right? Then we also have to identify a material first ignited. Now then, now the final part is identifying the sequence of events that make the material first ignited come into contact with your like, ignition source, and there you have your cause of fire. Okay. All right. I think I'll follow in here. <laughs> so I just want to make sure, though. So when we have the difference, all right. Let, let me let me get to the let me get to the, the kitchen. Yeah. Because that's obviously the place where the most open fire tends to occur. Yeah. I, I want to also add, even though I I, I, I um laid out the sequence, it's not that simple eh, because <laughs> fires are very difficult to investigate, especially when fire is the method used to normally hide other crimes. Ah. <laughs> that tells you that you know, it's very difficult to investigate. Yeah. yeah. And there are a lot of factors that you have to consider. Experience, again, uh, is, is very important when dealing with fire investigations. How long does it usually take to, to investigate the fire? It depends. Right? So look at the size, look at the complexity, look at the stage of the fire development. Right. right? And all these factors will take into consideration. You have to take into consideration mm -hmm. and sometimes um, it's some, sometimes some of it is difficult because um, fire is like a living thing. Each fire doesn't behave the same way. Mm -hmm. right? Each material involved is not the same. Each house is not the same. Mm -hmm. We have the same apartment. One person might have a wood, a wooden living room set. I may mm -hmm. have fabric. My fabric may be about, may be about different material, and all yeah. these factors come into play. So it's, it's, yeah, it's not just yeah. Becomes, yes. right? it's, not, it's not nearly near there. Yeah. All right. Let me let me jump across to the kitchen, right? Yeah. Because the kitchen is a place, like I said, with the most open open flames, yeah. I think, in, yeah. in any house generally, right? You're just yes. gonna go on average here. Um, are there certain things that you think we take for granted when it comes to, to the kitchen? Oh, definitely. So first of all, um, what we've been noticing within recent years, just going back to the fact that we use propane gas mm. in the kitchen, you have to look at your sources of, of hazard or your hazards and start working your way back from there. So what we're asking persons to do is to conduct a risk assessment. Now, mm -hmm. it sounds like a big, a big terminology used in the, in the health and safety world, but risk assessment means you identify your hazard, 
identify the likelihood of that hazard occurring, yeah. and then you start to mitigate against it happening. So what I would do, if you're going to purchase a tank of gasoline, I'm asking persons, don't just look at the top of the gasoline, of the gas tank, look at the bottom of the tank, because some of these tanks are actually rusted, and ah. we've actually gotten calls where there are leakage at the bottom of the tank. Wow. Not only that, many persons have a, the, the hose that runs from your, your tank to your gas, yeah. so from your stove to your gas, and there is, there is dry rotting taking place, there's breakage taking place, and the hose clips are sometimes non-existent. Yes. So you can imagine gas escaping in a kitchen, all you're looking for is an ignition source. Mm -hmm. um, I'm saying if you come into your home and you smell gas, definitely ventilate. Do not put on any lights, do all not right. take off any electronic, because those are sources of ignition. So what would you recommend to somebody? You come home and they smell gas, you're yeah. not sure where it's coming from, you're checking, make sure the oil is stove off and everything, yeah. right? Let's say uh, you're, you're still smelling the gas, you yeah. open up your ventilator and all that stuff. Right. What would you suggest they check next? Take that gasoline tank outside, right. get it under running water, make sure that there's no possible heat source anywhere around. Right. Ventilate your home thoroughly. Now, you see, I love, I love that you mentioned yeah. the running water, yeah. right? Put it under running water. Uh, that's generally the go-to. Everybody's yeah. mind goes yeah. to running water when yeah. I think about fire. Yeah. But there are certain situations where that's not the best yeah. situation. I agree. I'm going to ask us so, um, to, um, to talk about that. There are fires that prevent the additional risk of electrical shock, mm -hmm. right? And there are fires that are what we classify as class B fires, fires involving flammable liquids because oil and water doesn't mix, uh -huh. right? Sometimes, especially in the kitchen, where you have your oil pan fires, if you use water, you're going to create an explosive reaction. Yeah. As we see on screen here, the seen. example here is yes. that uh, this, this pot in it has oil. I yes. assume you're cooking something, yes. catch a little fire, and you still yes. out it. So you throw some water on it. Right. What happens that causes the fire to... to in so what happens is that, um, is that um, water and oil doesn't mix, right? In, in this scenario, the water settles below the oil, okay. right? Now, this happens at a very accelerated pace. So what, what happens is that the water is converted into a steam of vapor um, really quickly. Mm -hmm. And this steam of vapor obviously rises because hot air rises. Now, with the oil, the flammable oil on top now, it pushes everything aggressively mm. in an explosive manner, hence created this, this, this more, like, more or less an explosive yeah. type scenario. Yeah. And damages the home and, 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 and it could be even fatal. Because it could also catch other things are wrong on fire yeah. as well. Yeah. That's right. It would yeah. usually does because of the intensity of the fire. So how do you recommend that we out fires that have, let's say, oil in it, for example? Now, first things first, if you know you're frying or using any type of grill, you know, those type of oil type of scenarios, you make sure and have a cover, whatever ah. receptacle <laughs> that you're going to use. So before you take out your frying pan, take out the cover. Right. The next step is be in the kitchen while you are cooking. <laughs> unsupervised cooking and it's tough to say because um <laughs> in this day and age we have so much different things going on you have homework you have you know you have the iron for tomorrow mm -hmm. you have the um cooking you have to clean out you have to wash and things so we try to multitask and sometimes we jack of all trees master of none <laughs> right so you have to be in the kitchen especially mm -hmm. when frying stuff because that scenario happens when the material that we are cooking overheats okay so, right mm -hmm. okay so and you make sure and have your your, your cover uh, in the event of an emergency. And the cover, cover should the pan, be enough to stop. Cover the pan, right. yes, because it does what we call, in terms of the tree matters of fire extinction, it does smothering. So it eliminates the combination of the explosive mixture with air, That's right? True. And your second step is turn off the stove as to prevent additional heat from coming to that right. scenario. Thirdly, always have a fire extinguisher <laughs> sighted mm. close by. Okay. How close, how close should you keep your fire extinguisher to your kitchen? Um, usually your fire extinguishers should be sighted close to your risk. Uh, the biggest risk in your the residential home would be a kitchen. You usually sighted close to entrances slash exits, so you have the opportunity when entering the risk, right? When entering the risk to go with a level of protection. Okay. Okay. Understood. Any other any other protection points that we should note when it comes to the home? Yeah, definitely. So what we've also noticed within recent times, and I like to, to play back and to bring back into memory situations that have happened recently where persons have been injured. Just recently, we had a child that would have actually died as a result of falling into a hot pot of water yes. and then developing blood clots while in hospital. Mm -hmm. That situation should be avoided and so much that children and pets, not just your children, but your pet should not be allowed within three feet of your kitchen or your kitchen area. So, what, you know, when we were small long ago, we had the barricades and you couldn't enter yeah. certain parts. And that's what protected us as children. So nowadays, we, we have situations where children are moving through the kitchen. 
You know, and this is something we want parents to be cognizant of and to mm -hmm. avoid that completely. So you don't want children in the kitchen? We don't want. This no. is a no-play zone. No-play, okay. Definitely. So what if your children are like sous chef you know? Sometimes your <laughs> parents have children helping out in the kitchen and that kind of thing. We don't encourage that. All right, so that's different. An, an elder child, obviously, would, and we're talking about somebody in their teens, maybe helping right. their mom or dad in the kitchen. That is under supervision. That right. child has the ability to function. Right. And you would give them responsibilities as they show the skill set to do so. Okay. But never, ever a child who cannot understand the danger of touching a stove. Mm. Think about it. Okay, so it's also important for us to give them that education from, course, from jump to understand your, how hot yeah. the stove is, what yeah. danger Definitely. it can cause and that kind of thing. Um, now, every home should have a smoke detector of some kind, right? Yeah. Um, I, I know my father insists upon it. <laughs> so I imagine that you also insist upon it. And they have some new technology when it comes to smoke detectors. Yeah. Tell me about it. So what I want to do this morning, I want to showcase um, a wireless smoke detector. Mm -hmm. Because we've seen the challenge of having a battery-operated smoke detector in the home, and you're not at home. How does this communicate with you that I have a fire? Ah. So with the advent of further technology and development in fire protection, mm -hmm. we now have a smoke detector. And if I may per press the test button on this is going to give right that so one will that be? song mm -hmm. that test sent a, a message to my phone which is offset ah okay. i received that message and i immediately recognized that this smoke alarm is functional mm -hmm. and if i wanted to send it off i would have to send the signal from my phone or smoke in the chamber would cause this to go off and i would receive it i can then dial 990 zero. Zero mm -hmm. and indicate that my kitchen because it actually tells me exactly where this, lo this smoke detector is located. So you can have many of these in your home. There are even smoke detect detectors that are linked together. Right. So when the one in the kitchen goes off, you're in the bedroom, you need to be alerted. Mm -hmm. It alerts all of these smoke detectors in your home. Okay. All right. And you can connect all of these to your phone. You can connect all of these to your phone. Once there's wireless in the home, you can be anywhere. You can be in Miami. And yeah. you're going to get that signal. It's going to send a message to your phone. Mm -hmm. It will tell you exactly which of the detectors has gone off and it will give you the ability to, to re at least report it or alert members of your home who are there as well. Right, so let's, let's say that yeah. example that you just gave where yeah. you're in Miami or you're going on vacation, yeah. right? And you have these in your home and you get a signal. Yeah. Uh, if I call 990, you're all breaking on the house oh, and definitely, going in? definitely. Because <laughs> you've, now, you've now told us that you have a fire emergency. Right. And it is our job, it is our duty to investigate this. So we're going to send sirens blazing to your home. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're going to have to cut through certain things to access your home because the, the building is locked. But once we get in and once there's and obviously, where there's fire, there's smoke. Mm -hmm. We're going to see signs of smoke before we even get there. Right. And we're going to operate. So I just want to give kudos to my friends at IRP Fire Safety mm -hmm. because they were so so gracious to, to bring this to our attention yeah. and to share this with, with us so that we can promote it for, for the nation to be able to function. Oh, very, very important question. Yes. How much one of them things does cost? All right, so this is in the vicinity of between two to 300 TT dollars for really? one. That is very affordable. And it connects to any smartphone. And it connects to any smartphone. There's a particular software yeah. that you link with. And so you just download the app download and you'll the be app able to use it. And you program it and yeah. it's on. All right? So, it, I mean, it's it's easy. Anybody yeah, can do yeah, it. Yeah. Rockers, you can do it too. I mean, yeah, I, I'm looking forward to it because I hate the battery ones <laughs> oh, where you have yeah, to change oh, yeah, them oh, batteries yeah, all the oh, time. Yeah. And when the battery oh, dies, yeah. it just go off randomly. That's and another function. Yeah. And so the fire service continually looks at technology and how do we improve what we do mm -hmm. and how do we help citizens by offering the, them the advice. So we do the research and we bring it to you. And we appreciate that so very much. I have one more before we before we wrap up. Yeah. You're, you're, um, Mention, we mentioned the kitchen, we mentioned the oil in the kitchen and that kind of thing. But another thing that I think people take for granted is how clean your kitchen is, how clean your stove is. How is, does that affect, affect your, your risk? Or should I ask, let me ask you, yeah, also, okay. how does that affect your, your risk when it comes now, to um, cleaning your stove tops? Remember we talk about an ignition source coming in contact with a fuel first ignited, right? right? That's where your fire actually starts. Now, if you have a, a very unclean kitchen, a stove top that is dirty, then the, the burner can come into contact with the grease, the grime. Um, the, the, fo the, the food that has um, fallen on the stove yeah. from cooking, and that will start an incipient stage fire. Mm -hmm. So the, the grease on the, on the stove, yeah, even the though it's, it's old and it's whatever, it cake up and all that thing, it could still start it a fire. It will still start mm -hmm. a fire. Right? Think about and a commercial kitchen yeah. where you have the range hood and you have the extractor fans. Ducted, if yeah. you allow that ducting to fill with oil, you're in trouble. Mm -hmm. That's going to that's gonna eventually cause a fire. Yes. Yeah. And, and, and I want to add that we know we have in the fire prevention week, we are um, visiting kitchens yes. and certain food courts, and we are identifying that these ducting are not clean as regular yeah. as they yeah. should be. So it's a recommendation that we are sending out right now. So are you all, are you all visiting random kitchens? Where can people invite you to come and make sure their kitchen is safe? 
well, under the Occupational self, self Safety and Health Act, is actually mm -hmm. your responsibility to invite us. But as the Trinidad Tobago Fire Service Fire Authority, we do just visit anyway. Mm -hmm. Or if somebody reports that there's an untoward scenario at any particular kitchen, we also visit. All right, well, gentlemen, let me thank you so much for joining us this it's morning and for sharing the information Thanks with us. Uh, we really, really appreciate it, and I hope that people are able to take it and use the information given to make sure that they stay as safe as possible. I have plenty more questions I want I to know. ask about electrical I fires know. in particular, but that's a whole other conversation. Yeah. Uh, it's Fire Prevention Week, and cooking safety starts with you. Let me say thank you very much to Officer David Hunt and, of course, Jude, Jude Rogers, Fire Prevention Officers, joining us on set to chat a little bit about Fire Prevention Week. We'll take a quick break and come back with more on in our morning show. Stick around.